This is Jake Laser, and as of the recording of this video, he just made one of the biggest advancements when it comes to bringing Spider-Man to life. And he's not alone. Because after going through more than 10 years worth of research and puzzling together how to recreate his four most important superpowers, not only did I find out how close we really are to becoming Spider-Man, but also how we're getting there. This is James Hobson from Hacksmith Industries, one of the first creators to explore and make viral real-life Spider-Man tech back in 2017, closely followed by Jay Laser Video and his DIY web shooter. Back when Alan Walker music was used in 9 out of every 10 YouTube videos, Spider-Man tech was all about the small steps. Using magnets to climb on surfaces, gloves and strings to simulate swinging, and funneling loco-tight spray adhesive into empty lighters to simulate web fluid. The fun stuff, you know? These inventions tackled two of the five spider powers we'll be covering today. And the first one was webs. If you search and scroll through web shooters on YouTube, almost every prototype is built to serve one purpose only. Like this one that uses a magnet to pull cans, or this one that shoots silky fluid, or this one that's used for swinging, sort of. As you can see, these web shooters naturally divide into two. The simple, good-looking and easy-to-use toys, and the heavy-duty, pressure-powered behemoths that allow you to grapple, stick or nail yourself to the ceiling. But is there any way we can have both in one? Back in the 1980s, PCs used to have a few hundred kilobytes of RAM, barely being able to run a few tasks at once. Nowadays, you can have way more than 200,000 times the amount of RAM in a laptop if you so damn please. My point is, powerful tech tends to get smaller. If enough time and resources were put into these contraptions that look taken out of a Saw movie, they will eventually get lighter, smaller, and less pointy. And I've got proof. The first iterations of swinging web shooters were clunky, heavy, and required a lot of gear to work properly. Yet on December 10th, 2025, Jake Laser posted a video documenting his latest creation. A pressure-powered device that fits on your wrist that launches a metal plate that can stick to any flat surface using off-brand Nickelodeon slime. Looks too good to be true. And that's because there are still a couple of fixes other than the weight that need to be taken into consideration before attempting to make flips with a canister of pressurized air attached to the wrist. One of them is solving the surface area problem, because it's not the same trying to pull a can of Dr. Pepper with a tiny magnet than a satellite dish. This means only swinging for now. Another problem is the friction and discomfort of holding the string which Jake solves with a 3D printed handle that he has to wrap the string around before every swing. The web also has to be retractable and the design should work for more than just flat surfaces. The point is, people are working on it and it won't be long before the designs get lighter, cleaner and overall better. However, it is true that swinging is gonna take a couple more decades before it can be done comfortably. Thankfully for us, sticking to walls looks a bit easier? YouTube engineers seem to be solving the issue quite creatively by either literally sticking themselves to stuff or using some sort of device that uses magnets or suction to get the job done. These work, but they're painfully slow. And once the goose stops sticking or the device runs out of battery, uh, you're dead. Which is why I decided to look into more of a scientific approach. Good thing is that liking and subscribing isn't rocket science, so if you can, it'd be great if you did. Thanks. In 2014, Elliot Hawks from the University of South Carolina published an article as part of his PhD where he proved that it was possible to climb the side of a glass building by using a material that could be used to stick to walls without being sticky at all. But how does he do it? And is it viable? For a more professional explanation, go watch Veritasium's video on the topic cause he's the science guy. Regardless, I'll see what I can do. Elliot used a material called synthetic gecko adhesive. At a microscopic level, the material is formed by these tiny branches that resemble the morphology of gecko's feet, as they use van der Waal forces to adhere to almost any smooth surface. These forces occur due to the imbalance of electrons at a molecular level 
positively charging the atom on one side while charging the other side negatively. And just like any loving couple, these two attract each other, which of course results in children. Well, cry. The question is, how far can we take this? Despite his challenge with surface area, maximum stress, and speed, he managed to prove that, and I quote, the synthetic adhesion system enabled a 70 kilogram human to climb vertical glass with 140 centimeters squared of adhesive per hand. Which is huge, but it's been more than 10 years. And the applications of the gecko adhesive seem to be facing towards the more useful side of it, as they should. And although the latest advancements on climbing look promising, they still take so long to stick that if used in this homecoming scene, well, let's just say these guys are not making it. Okay, so how about instead of looking into the work in progress superpowers, we instead focus on the already in use. The exoskeletons have been a thing for a while now, but they've been bulky, heavy, and they eat more batteries than these guys. However, just like I've mentioned before, powerful tech tends to get smaller. That's why the 29th of March, 2018, Rome Robotics announced a mobile exoskeleton that looks taken straight out of a video game, which increases strength and endurance of the lower portion of your body, allowing for longer and more stress-inducive walks. But walking harder ain't gonna help you jump a building. So how can we? Short answer, we can't. Long answer, we're not really trying to. There's only so much power you can pack into an exoskeleton. Any more and you'd be increasing weight and affecting mobility. And since we don't have world-destroying threats attacking New York every two years, scientists and engineers are not using time or money to bring superheroes to life, but rather building exoskeletons that relieve stress from the muscle, health-focused suits to help recovering patients, or straight up robots that do the heavy lifting all together. Which means that although we can increase our strength and mobility with rechargeable super soldier looking devices, we haven't yet figured out how to make a human hold two halves of a fairy midway in the air. But fret not, as we're about to talk about a device that, although doesn't exist, might be the closest we've ever been to bringing spider sense to life. In 2013, a student of the University of Illinois Victor Marevici. came up with a suit concept that uses ultrasonic sensors to detect nearby objects. And although it was mostly aimed for people who couldn't actually see in the first place, it laid the foundation for what could very well be the creation of the spider sense. Fast forward eight years when Hacksmith Industries came up with a mask that instead uses LiDAR sensors to detect nearby objects and uses vibrations to signal whether something is close or not. What is LiDAR, you may ask? It is that seemingly useless black circle besides the camera lenses of pro iPhones that uses invisible lasers to interpret 3D spaces. However, there's still a huge problem. How can either of these designs know if there's a guy following me or if it's just New York traffic. Well, they don't. Yet. Thanks to self-driving cars that use this technology, we know that real-time environmental scanning is possible. And with the combination of motion sensors like the original design, there would only be one thing that the device would have to do before we attempt to dodge bullets. And that's learning. By using the machine learning side of AI to recognize patterns, sounds, and movements if we don't move, it won't see us. that are associated with danger, say a person stalking you or an earthquake rumble, a pair of smart glasses, for example, fitted with this technology can interpret this data and then let you know about the danger. And I know what you're gonna say. Dude, I think if the building I'm on was falling or someone shot at me, not only would I know, but the last thing I need is my Meta Ray Bands telling me today's forecast is cloudy with a chance of death. And that's true, but the tech goes even further than that. Imagine it was connected to the surveillance system of your city, so that only by wearing a pair of glasses, a cop or a firefighter could be alerted instantly of a robbery, a fire, or the location of a running criminal. Or picture going into a dark room and being able to have a 3D scan of the area without using a flashlight. Just imagine the uses for visually impaired individuals or crime scene analytics. Believe it or not, SpiderSense is closer than you think. 
Sure, your reaction time is still human, and turning the lights on still seems to be the go-to option for dark rooms. But it's cool to think that the tech might come sooner than we think and become as accessible as a good old Gucci pair of glasses. Look, the Spider-Man dream might seem a bit further than we first thought, but is it really? Even with Earth's physics and human ability slowing us down, they haven't completely stopped us from creating some amazing things. We've done one-to-one -one replicas of suits with moving lenses and arms. We've got wingsuits we can somewhat fly with and countless other gadgets that range from toys to scientific breakthroughs. So next time you think we're too far from becoming Spider-Man, how about you instead think about how close we've really gotten? Huh, I wonder how close we are from the Super Soldier Serum. And if you want to know why even if you could, you wouldn't want to be Spider-Man, click this video next. And as always, thanks for watching.